Hello guys, this is Anna and I currently vlog daily about the situation in my country, Ukraine, during our war with Russia. And I'm very grateful for your attention, for your subscriptions and for your questions because your attention and your support is very important during these difficult times in my country. Also, we were hidden behind the curtain, iron curtain for a pretty long period of time and now I think the world needs to know more about Ukraine. I try to be objective in all of my videos, but these are vlogs, so of course I have my own emotions and I describe you the situation the way I see it. But what I can guarantee you is that I never try to manipulate the opinion and uh, also that the majority of Ukrainians, I think 100% of the Ukrainians, think the way I do. Especially because we discuss topics like war, like our present political situation, and we are all very united in our vision of what is going on, in our desire to win, to st stay strong, and of course to um, see the day when Putin is dead, I'm sorry. Uh, very often I get the question about Donbass region and about war, uh, when did it start? And to tell you the truth, I think that our wars with Russia started like centuries ago and they are not based on uh, some um, Russian desire to grow bigger because Russia is already the biggest country in the world, but also, I guess, one of the worst countries in the world. And uh, it is more about culture, ideology and uh, some other basic values that our societies are built on. And I see a very huge gap between the Ukrainian mentality and the Russian mentality. And somehow we always like to build, to preserve, to plant, and they like to invade, to steal. Uh, everything, starting from the territories and finishing with uh, history. So the uh, history of our wars is pretty, pretty long. But when talking about this modern times, I can tell you that uh, all of our serious problems started when Ukraine was occupied by Soviet Union. And I say occupied because it was not the dream of uh, the Ukrainian people to join that totalitarian machine. Of course, at the very beginning, um, many Ukrainian philosophers, many Ukrainian writers somewhere in the 20s believed that Soviet Union will be something different, an extremely developed society based on uh, industrial standards and like building the future, something like Elon Musk. But a very Quickly, and I think that just like so socialism, communism was quite popular in uh, Europe back at, at the beginning of the century. And it, it's very good that in most countries uh, this did not succeed. Uh, but the majority of Ukrainians were against because uh, we are very much uh, in support of private property. And for centuries, we had something like a normal developed uh, middle class. I know it's not like the classical middle class, but we had we had lots of normal peasants. People loved their orchards, their like uh, fields, their horses, and in general, uh, we lived better than Russians. And that's why they always felt that Ukraine is necessary for their success. And uh, the left bank, because very often we, when we talk about Ukraine, it's divided by the Dnieper River to the right bank Ukraine and left bank Ukraine. So left bank Ukraine, east uh, of Ukraine, was occupied by Soviets in 20s and uh, the western part of Ukraine was occupied in 1939. And... Um, during that period, the beginning of uh, the Soviet Union, uh, people lost their property. Millions died in various uh, Soviet concentration camps. Um, they uh, were uh, sent to Siberia. They lost their homes. They lost their farms. The middle class was destroyed and their position was really strong. That's why we had a couple of uh, artificial famines and the deadliest of which was in 1933, uh, that was Holodomor, and millions of Ukrainians died. And they died on the territories that suffer the most right now. And in Kharkiv, in Donetsk, in Luhansk, uh, people were dying of famine, even though they had 
pretty good harvest and Ukraine is known as the breadbasket of Europe but uh, communist uh, police and uh, various leaders they were taking away all the harvest uh, so that people had nothing to eat and even when they trying to collect like a couple of seeds they were arrested and executed so during that awful years millions of Ukrainians died and instead on that territories lots of Russian were brought from other regions and they started building plants mines factories building that soviet uh, machine and that's why i may tell that the population and the culture of that regions uh, changed a lot the same they did with crimea and crimea was always a very beautiful and interesting peninsula it uh, had uh, diverse cultures living on it including tatars uh, greeks and um, it was ideal for uh, resorts and so on, but uh, Soviets built lots of military bases uh, there and it was one of the locations of the Soviet Navy. And uh, the, so to some extent we may say that they have turned a beautiful resort into a military base. And uh, the Soviet, after the Soviet Union fall, uh, everything went wrong and um, in the majority of post-Soviet countries like Ukraine, like Belarus, the first presidents were actually the heads of the Communist Party. Uh, somehow they switched their costumes very quickly and became uh, Ukrainian patriots and Democrats. But you know that you cannot change that quickly and uh, they simply wanted to stay at power and um, people were not prepared like to change everything totally and for a couple of years like uh, it was a very difficult period like uh, every the birth of oligarchy because lots of state property became the property of various criminals and bandits it's something unbelievable like the change of currency the change of property everything but very quickly, uh, Russia realized that it wants all of these republics back, but republics did not want back, and especially Ukraine and those countries that were under Soviet Union influence, like Lithuania, Estonia, we were pretty sure we don't want to come back into that occupation and leave behind the Iron Curtain. Um, and Putin once said that the fall of the Soviet Union was a true geopolitical catastrophe. And I think that was a very dangerous uh, sign that many politicians and including Ukrainian politicians did not pay much attention to. And as a true KGB agent, he decided to work secretly. And I can tell you that many Ukrainian politicians in 2000s, these were Russian agents. For example, you have all heard about our Maidan revolution and this revolution was against the pro-Russian president uh, Viktor Yanukovych. Viktor Yanukovych was uh, totally created by uh, Russians and they imagined he will become a Ukrainian Lukashenko and he will turn the country into the direction of Russia. Actually, all of that revolution started with his desire uh, not to uh, sign uh, our um, documents that association with the European Union, but he said that perhaps we will keep ourselves neutral. And Ukrainians did not want to stay neutral under Russian influence. We wanted Europe, that's why we started protesting. Plus, the very figure of Yanukovych was very ugly he was a criminal that was uh, in jail for two years or something for stealing a hat a fur hat you know like soviets wearing this fur hat so when he was young he stole that fur cat a fur hat also he used bad language he was very bad at uh, articulating and uh, he was definitely pro-russian also the minister of defense of ukraine in the times of uh, yanukovych was a citizen of russia well like he did not speak about that openly but later on uh, it was on the news and everywhere that he was also a citizen of russia and lots of uh, russian citizens and russian special agents were working for uh, Ukrainian structures just to trying uh, to change the uh, situation in our country and to make it 
Belarus-like. This is what Lukashenko says, for example, right now that he does not understand why we protest so hard because all Putin wants is to make us Belarus. This is actually why we fight. We don't want to become Belarus. But they were working really hard and uh, they were trying to influence lots of people and deputies in various um, Ukrainian regions. And as I have already told you, many of these regions were Russified in the 30s, in the 50s. This is true about Donbass. Lots of Russians came to live there and Crimea was turned into a military base. That's Russian military base and pro-Russian Ukrainian presidents signed uh, various contracts that allowed Russian Navy to stay there until uh, 2017 or something like that. And as a result, when we had that uh, Maidan, we had that revolution, Putin did not, did not expect such freedom, uh, such strength in Ukrainian people because he doesn't see that in Russian people. And uh, as a result, he decided to act and they annexed Crimea and they started the annexation of Donbass, but it did not went that easy as it was with uh, Crimea. We totally understand that the uh, referendum in Crimea was fake. And very quickly after annexation, they started to, um, I don't know, they were changing the population of Crimea. And I know that more than 300,000 Russians were brought to Crimea to change like the uh, population of uh, the peninsula and the attitudes on that peninsula. And uh, the same about Donbass, uh, it was not a civil war because Ukrainian people of Donbass, they never planned like any revolutions or something. And there were professional Russian military men, just similar to those that were in Crimea. The only thing they did not do that openly and they did not wear a Russian uniform, but they had tanks, they had professional military equipment. And uh, when some of the Western journalists asked them on press conference, where did you get tanks if you're just civilians fighting for the freedom of Donbass? And they told him we bought it in the military shop somewhere. Of course, you understand it's impossible to buy a tank. And uh, Russia uses similar techniques in other post-Soviet countries like Moldova, like Georgia. They are also occupied by Russian troops who finance uh, various pro-Russian movements and uh, they also create various conflicts. They try to provoke people and to create a totally negative image of Ukraine. And it was very difficult for us in 2014 to demonstrate that we're a normal country because Russia is everywhere. Russia has its English speaking TV channels. They have uh, hundreds and millions uh, of uh, internet trolls that post various things and depict Ukrainians as people who, I don't know, kill children and drink their blood. And that was very difficult to fight with this image. And I think they, uh, once again, when they came uh, to Ukraine uh, with this more aggressive phase of war, they thought they will take over the country very quickly and the wo world won't see their face, their true face. Because if we talk about Nazis in this war, uh, these are Russians. And uh, what they do here, these are real crimes. And uh, I, I think I will record a separate video about their crimes that they commit here in Ukraine. And um, definitely this regime, this Putin's regime is dangerous to the rest of the world. So to sum it all up, this war did not start uh, on the 24th of February. And perhaps it did not start in 2014. It started centuries before. Uh, when we have decided that we want to, we, we value freedom, we value property, we kind of like traveling, we like other countries around us, uh, we like seeing the world, we like showing ourselves to the world, and Russians, they somehow like suffering, and uh, even Russian people, I don't know, they enjoy this problems, hardships, and when you read that, even when you read their classical literature, you see that, um, like, the main message is don't even try, everything will be bad. And they try to spread this evil around, but we won't let them and we won't let them with your support. 
once again thank you for watching Sus subscribe if you want to hear my updates and ask your questions i will answer them subjectively but honestly thank you slava ukraine